A suspicious blast at a Russian naval base on August 8, 2019, sparked incessant rumors all over the world. The explosion, which resulted in the loss of five scientists, occurred at a military site in the Arkhangelsk northwestern region near Nyanoska. It is home to the Russian Navy's top research and development facility. One day after the tragic incident, Rosatom, the state corporation specializing in nuclear energy, revealed that the explosion had taken place during a series of tests on a liquid propulsion system involving the use of radioactive isotopes. The secrecy surrounding the explosion and the sudden spike in radiation by 16 times over the average in the surrounding area of Neonoska immediately alarmed the international scientific community. In an interview with Reuters, US-based nuclear researchers Jeffrey Lewis and Ankit Panda said they didn't believe the accident was related to liquid fuel missile engines, as they do not give off radiation. Scientists believe the accident stemmed from a failed test of a missile that Russia calls the 9M730 Burdovesnik. NATO codenamed it the SSC X9 Skyfall. President Vladimir Putin had boasted about the missile prototype in a State of the Union speech earlier that year. He claimed that the device could reach any corner of the world in seconds because its nucleus is partially powered by a nuclear reactor instead of standard fuel. Putin also said that this one-of-a-kind device was part of a new generation of weapons assembled to evade American missile defenses. According to several Pentagon reports, the Skyfall rocket's nuclear component would make it unstoppable against America's existing anti-missile systems in Alaska and California. If built, Skyfall would be considered a potential threat to the U.S. On November 21, 2018, Putin attended a ceremony to present the late scientists with a posthumous award. The president assured the audience that they had not been lost in vain, as the project they were working on would, quote, ensure Russia's sovereignty and security for decades to come. The exact nature of the event has yet to be officially disclosed. North Korean Aftershock Eight and a half minutes after North Korea set off a nuclear bomb, a second energy burst shook the testing area. The scientists were puzzled. The underground test, which occurred on September 3rd, 2017, was North Korea's sixth and largest tryout up to then. It yielded 250 kilotons, 17 times the potency of the World War II Hiroshima bomb. Some experts believe that the detonated device was a hydrogen device. If true, it would be a significant leap beyond the more rudimentary methods that the country had explored before. The underground bomb's explosion produced a 6.3 magnitude earthquake, followed by a 4.1 aftershock eight and a half minutes later. These earthquakes happened when an area above the testing site, located on Mount Montop, collapsed into an underground cavity previously occupied by the bomb's circumference. The shocks, which were picked up by seismometers worldwide, opened a window into the complex world of nuclear explosions physics. Scientists theorized about the causes behind the second earthquake, ranging from a tunnel collapse, a landslide, or some sort of splintering of the rock formations inside Mount Montop. But seismologists couldn't agree on a conclusion, as there wasn't enough evidence to pin down the cause. In a surprising turn of events, Chinese and American seismic stations picked up several smaller aftershocks during the months after the detonation. They totaled 13 mini-earthquakes, all within seven miles of one another. The first aftershocks occurred in September of 2017, and the last on April 22, 2018, seven months after the initial detonation. It became clear that the bomb was so potent it had shaken up the Earth. It took Mount Montop almost a year to settle. The events renewed fears of additional nuclear bomb testing involving Mount Paktu, a volcanic mountain near the site that North Korea considers holy. The volcano's last eruption happened in 1903, and the 2017 underground nuclear test sparked international concern about the possible effects on Mount Paktu. Some wonder if North Korea could activate the volcano with a hydrogen bomb. Mystery Flash While flying over the South Atlantic Ocean, an American Vela spy satellite registered two flashes of light, possibly related to a nuclear explosion. Nuclear bombs produce two separate flashes. The second one is barely noticeable to humans. However, the optical sensors installed in the Vela can differentiate a standard explosion from a nuclear detonation. This mysterious double flash, which occurred on September 22, 1979, raised concerns in the White House, and President Carter was immediately notified. American officers were puzzled by the explosion. The spot where it was registered, between Antarctica and the southernmost tip of South America, ruled out a hostile or threatening event. It was also far from any known nuclear testing site. As the event became public, theories circulated about its possible causes. A technical satellite malfunction and meteor activity came up. But many Americans, including President Carter, 
were convinced that it was the result of some kind of nuclear test. No country ever claimed responsibility for the incident. In 2017, Dr. Christopher Wright and Dr. Lars Eric de Geer, an expert in tracking down sources of nuclear weapons signatures, authored a story published in the Science and Global Security Journal. It stated that the 1979 event was an undeclared nuclear test carried out by Israel, with apartheid-era South Africa playing a supporting role. When a nuclear device explodes, it releases radioactive iodine into the atmosphere, which is then absorbed through the thyroid gland. A type of isotope iodine-131 was found in the thyroids of Australian sheep. When analyzed, the residue showed that the animals had grazed among radioactive fallout from the incident. Archived meteorological data from 1979 corroborated Dr. Wright and Dr. Jagir's hypotheses, indicating that fallout from the Israeli South African blast could have indeed floated to southern Australia. Neither country has publicly admitted to the incident. Iranian Sabotage In the summer of 2020, Iranian nuclear facilities experienced numerous explosions over a few weeks. The first one occurred on June 24th, in the Parchin military complex, 18 miles away from Tehran. Less than an hour later, a power outage hit Shiraz, home to some of Iran's largest military facilities. The Iranian government quickly dismissed the events. They attributed the Parchin base incident to a gas explosion, and said that the Shiraz blackout was caused by a blast in the city's power stations. But the sudden explosions continued throughout the summer. On July 2nd, a blast at a centrifuge assembly facility in the city of Natanz was so large that it set back the Iranian nuclear program for at least two years. At least seven other explosions were recorded that year. The affected locations included alleged missile sites, petrochemical centers, and power plants. There is no concrete proof that the incidents had any correlation. With the pandemic affecting the world's economy, it could be possible that the facility's upkeep was not a priority. The explosions could have been a tragic coincidence. Since then, Many people have wondered if Israel or the U.S. were responsible for some of the explosions. When former President Donald Trump withdrew from the Iran nuclear deal in 2018, the Middle Eastern country had long been rumored to be close to developing its own atomic weapon. With Iran in a weakened position due to its weakened economy, Israel could target its military and nuclear programs without significant retaliation. They could follow through with or without America's approval. There has also been speculation that instead of leaving their nuclear program behind, the explosions could push Iran to finish their bomb as quickly as possible. Both American and Israeli intelligence officials still insist they had nothing to do with the detonations. It is rumored that cyber attacks could be behind many of the incidents. Flight 2075 On Valentine's Day of 1950, an Air Force B-36 peacemaker assigned at the 7th Bombardment Wing crashed atop Mount Collegette in British Columbia, Canada. It had just dropped a Mark IV nuclear bomb into the ocean. The B-36 was performing a simulated nuclear attack on San Francisco, completing a route from Elson Air Force Base in Alaska to Carswell Air Force Base in Texas. According to testimony from the surviving crew members, after experiencing technical difficulties, the men had no choice but to jettison the Mark IV nuclear bomb over the Pacific Ocean. Strangely, rather than immediately crashing, the B-36 continued to fly on for nearly 200 miles before it impacted the snowy Mount Collegiate. After a massive search and rescue operation, 12 of the 17 crew members were rescued from the area in which they bailed. The remaining five, including the weaponeer, Captain Schreier, were never found. Three years after the accident, the plane's wreckage was discovered from the air. The Air Force attempted to reach the remote area on three separate occasions. In 1954, an Air Force team finally reached the location. The team stripped the plane of its classified equipment and destroyed what remained. No one knew if the bomb detonated over the ocean, or whether it was still lost somewhere in the Canadian wilderness. In 2003, more than five decades after the incident, an investigation team went back to the crash site and found that the crash had destroyed most of the B-36's bomb bay. Its bomb shackle, which kept the bomb suspended, was mostly intact. The B-36 crash became known as the first broken arrow, a military term used for an accident involving a nuclear weapon. It was also the first time in history that a nuclear weapon had been lost. The Mark IV nuclear bomb has never been found, and its fate has never been definitively confirmed.